There may be a better way to teach our children, an approach to learning that engages every area of a child's brain. It enhances their memory, expands their ability to solve problems, and has been shown to lead to improved behaviour, increased attendance and greater parental involvement. According to new scientific research, young brains perform better on music. Advances in our understanding of how the brain works are revealing for the first time the positive effects a musical education can have on the development of a child's thinking processes. Since 1999, Galleons Primary School in East London has been using an innovative method to teach the national curriculum. The approach of the early founders of Galleons was very much based on the principles of a creative curriculum. When I came to Galleons as an experienced teacher, I noticed instantly a difference in our children. I began to see how music teaching gave the children that scope to grow. When a school opened, it faced very specific challenges, quite common in inner city schools. The school recognised the power of music in motivating the pupils, instilling a sense of discipline, but also helping them to become creative learners across the board. Using music as a pedagogic tool can be as simple as singing the register, varying the pitch when speaking, clapping a rhythm, or encouraging children to sing. Good afternoon, Angelina. Good afternoon, Miss Smith. Let's play together. Oh, good afternoon, Isaac. Hola, Isaac. Hola, bien. Good afternoon, Zainab. We follow the national curriculum, but we just try and integrate music within it as a way of learning. We have our usual lessons, maths and then literacy and in between I always make sure that we have one of those brain break games where we will clap a rhythm. So when I say three, you're going to go to your tables, you're going to need to get your chart and a pencil. I started singing instructions. Instead of asking them pick up the scissors, please pick up the scissors and they just would do it. Initially, at the start, it, it can be a little bit nerve-wracking to sort of throw yourself into it, but, I mean, that's part of being a teacher, isn't it? You're just overcoming it. Oh, he's going straight to red, is he? Why is he going straight to red? Because it was a bad choice. He made a bad choice. He is in jail. Science is revealing that music is a universal feature of cognition. Studies of children with language disorders and language delays are proving that musical hearing is critical to language acquisition and ability. When I came here and I observed the sort of ethos of the school and I felt that music had a really positive impact on the children's concentration in the class and their behaviour. I noticed that the children were calm. It seemed to really help, especially with the SEN children. They like the predictability of it. OK, should we do that song? We have a new girl in our class who doesn't speak any English. It's her first week at Gallions and we went to a singing lesson yesterday. It's the first time she can feel part of the lesson. Just come and show it to me. We have seen how music has enhanced our children's learning. I don't think there should be anything that stops you from embracing it because it has many benefits. At Gallions, basic music skills are first introduced during early learning. Then, starting in year two, each pupil is given a weekly music lesson on a stringed instrument. This is taught by a specialist and tailored to the child's individual needs. The great advantage of instrumental teaching is that we require so many disciplines in one go in order to do it. So not only have they got to be thinking theoretically about what they're about to play and physically how they're going to do it, 
We've got highly developed motor skills and listening skills. They have to be able to listen to take instruction and they have to problem solve. We're also working on things like maths. Rhythm is fundamentally, it's just maths. Pick up your clays, let's play it together. And... At the end of the day, they have to work as a team. The staff at Galleons have experienced firsthand the enormous benefits of using music to teach across the curriculum. But what is it about learning to play a musical instrument specifically that improves children's ability to learn? Recent neuroscientific research is revealing how different activities affect our brains. It's emerging that structured musical tuition is one of the most effective ways to stimulate the whole brain, engaging both hemispheres at the same time. This strengthens both the activity and connections between the linguistic and mathematical areas of the left and the creative and emotional areas of the right. And this helps our brains work faster and more effectively. We are then able to apply that strength and speed to other cognitive skills, such as memory and problem solving. So it appears that learning to play a musical instrument could be the equivalent of a full body workout for the brain. The science seems to support what Galleons have been doing for nearly two decades, but what are the realities of implementing this method in your school today? Five years ago, Ilminster Avenue Primary School in Bristol was in special measures. When I started here in 2012, we used to teach music, but it wasn't a culture that was deeply embedded here. Our SATS results have gone up a lot in the last few years. Music's got a lot to do with it because it's helped the children's concentration a lot. It's made the children a lot more disciplined. That's had an impact on all aspects of their learning across the board. One of the big things in my job in the last few years has been to get the teachers engaged. Even though that teachers are used to getting up in front of children every day, they're doing something they feel confident with. If it's doing something that they've never done before, I think it's that there's a little bit of fear with it. The huge challenge for me is that I can't sing at all. So, <laughs> so to be holding things like singing assemblies, it was really difficult. And I think the children get more out of it almost because I'm not musically trained at all. They don't have to worry about, oh, no, I can't sing, so I'm not going to try. When they can see me at the front, it, it encourages them to join in. Take me down to the railroad track. Take me down to the railroad track. Got my boots, got my hands. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready? ready? Open them. No! We have the most amazing teachers. There's been a definite culture shift in this school. We got funding last year for any teacher here to learn music to grade one on any instrument they liked. So for example, I'm in the guitar club. One that I really struggle with massively is G. Whilst the teachers at Ilminster Avenue E-Act Academy actively take part in music lessons, their work is supported by an external team of music specialists. Yeah. My trumpet players could maybe only play one or two notes. They were really struggling, but we, we carried on. And now they can play a tune, read a note and see what it is, and they can know the rhythms. I think a lot of it is raising the level of what they think they can achieve. We want to make it as easy as possible for people to go from zero to playing an instrument. We're all about success. We want them to be able to do it and be able to do it well. Tea, coffee, tea, tea. Can we do that again? Music has been the driver that has got our parents in. When I started, we struggled to get parents to come into assemblies. We struggled to get them in for any performances. Now we have to ticket them. We don't charge for the tickets, but it's just for numbers. It's testimony that our children are begging their parents to come in. And that's what we want to see, that our confident learners in everything they do. Our children love being at school. They never used to, but they do now.
Do the benefits of programmes we've seen outweigh the investment needed to provide an integrated music-centred learning environment for our children? When I started here, only 24% of our children were leaving with where they should be in writing and 36% in maths and reading. Absolutely shocking, absolutely appalling. Last year, the spelling, punctuation and grammar was up to 89%, reading was 96% and maths was 91%. In current times, we are very preoccupied with targets and sometimes in our determination to get there, we take things in a very rote way without actually looking at that whole child and the holistic learning of that child. We have significant deprivation in this area with very high pupil premium and yet we get outcomes like we do and with happy children. To my mind and to the mind of the people that came before me, it is not an add-on and as such, it is more than value for money. I'm challenged constantly from other people. Convince me that you need to keep this in budget, that you need to keep music going. And my answer always is, if you take music out of this school, you will rip its heart out. Neuroscience is proving that there is a direct link between learning to play a musical instrument and enhanced focus and linguistic development. This supports the testimonials of pioneering schools throughout the UK. There are simple steps you can take for free to transform your children's learning abilities. For more information, visit www.musichelpsuslearn.com. Secondary school does a lot of music and stuff. Yeah, I think all of our schools do music. I would really like to carry on music. It's something that brings joy to the world. This school has introduced like all our instruments to us, yeah. like all the string instruments. I wouldn't yeah. play the double bass if I didn't come I to this. I would play the cello if I came to this. Yeah, I'd definitely like to carry on double bass definitely and try and get to grade eight. And I would like to do the saxophone as well. Yeah, yeah I can teach you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh.